Hi, welcome to Master Math. I'm Stan Lyle. Today, we're going to talk about solving systems of equations, and this is part two of a two part lesson. If you haven't done part one, you probably better go back and try it now. And we'll start today with a, a math joke. I know you all love math jokes. So, on the quiz, Freddie was asked to solve this problem find X. Hmm. Freddie said it's a right triangle. It's the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Freddie thought and thought and was having trouble solving it. So he finally came up with this answer and turned it in. Here it is. Today's lesson is on systems of linear equations. And all we mean by systems of linear equations is more than one linear equation. It's several linear equations. In this case, it's two linear equations. And those expressions uh, came from this problem over here. So let's read this problem and see where those expressions came from. The number of boys, which we'll call x, plus 6 equals the number of girls, which we'll call y. The number of boys plus 6 equals the number of girls. The number of girls plus boys equals 26. The number of girls plus the number of boys equals 26. How many boys are there? Think we can figure that out? Well, I'm going to show you how. What we want to do is solve for one of the variables and then substitute that solution into the other equation. What we're really trying to do is get the second equation so it's got nothing in it but X's, boys. We want to get rid of that Y. And we can do that if we solve the first equation for Y. Well, we're kind of lucky here because they gave us the first equation in the y equals format and y equals x plus 6. So if we know y equals x plus 6, we also know that y plus x equals 26. Now, if we know that y equals x plus 6, couldn't we substitute x plus 6 for that y? and not change that equation. I mean, we're just replacing y with something exactly equal to y. It's not going to change anything. So that's what we've done here. I've changed the y into x plus 6, and then I write the rest of the expression in the format it was in before, and now I've got x plus 6 plus x equals 26. Now, I just combine my x's. I got 2x plus 6, and that still equals 26. I got to get rid of this plus 6, so I subtract 6 from both sides of the expression, and now I've got 2x equals 26 minus 6, or 20. Now I got to get rid of that 2 times, so I'm going to divide both sides of the expression by 2. On the left, I'm left with just x. On the right, I've got 10. Well, here's another thing that's kind of interesting. If I were to take those two expressions that we just solved for, y equals x plus 6 and y equals minus x plus 26, and I change the format so that they're in slope-intercept format, I could plot those lines or plot those equations on a coordinate plane, create two lines, and here's one of the lines. That's the y equals x plus 6. And here's the other line, that's y equals minus x plus 26. And guess what? Where those two lines crossed would be the solution that we just came up with. x equals 10. Okay, let's try a problem. You have 36 problems on the test. Some are algebra problems, and we'll call those A. And the rest are geometry problems, and we'll call those G. There are 10 more algebra problems than there are geometry problems. How many algebra problems are there? Think we can solve that? I bet we can. Well, I think we can solve this problem if we go about it step by step and systematically. So what are our steps? Well, the first step is to figure out what are you trying to solve for and to give it a name. 
Well, that's part of the CUC pro CUCC process. You want to underline the question. So we underline the question, how many algebra problems are there? And we gave it a name. Well, the problem had already given it a name, A. Now, the second step is to ask yourself, what do you know? Well, that's part of CUCC, too. We know a couple of things. We know that there are a total of 36 problems on the test, and we know that there are 10 more algebra problems than there are geometry problems. So we know a couple of things. Now the third step is set up your equations and solve. Well, what do I know? See, I know that there are a total of 36 problems on the test and that, that they are either algebra problems or geometry problems. So the number of algebra problems plus the number of geometry problems equals 36 problems. Well, that's a good start. Now let's see if there's some, some other equation we can set up. How about this one? We know that there are 10 more algebra problems than there are geometry problems. So the number of algebra problems minus 10 would equal the number of geometry problems. Well, now we're most of the way there. Now we just got, we've got a system of uh, equations and we need to solve it. So, if we know that g equals a minus 10, we can go to the other equation and replace g with a minus 10, and then we've got an equation with only a's in it, and we can solve it. So that's what I've done over here. We've got this equation rewritten this way. a plus, instead of g, a minus 10 equals 36. Now we simplify that. The two a's combined to 2a minus 10 equals 36. Now I need to get rid of this minus 10 so I can solve for a. So I've got to add 10 to both sides of the equation. Now it reads 2a equals 46. Step two of the two-part solution is to get rid of the two times. So I divide by 2 on both sides of the equation. 2a divided by 2 is a. 46 divided by 2 is 23. Well, here's another question I didn't ask you. If there are 23 algebra questions, how many geometry questions are there? I'll give you a second to think about that. Well, the answer is 13, because I know that the number of algebra questions plus the number of geometry questions equals 36. And I know that 23 of the questions are algebra questions. So 23 plus g equals 36, and g would equal 13. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the solution. Okay, let's attack this question systematically, and we're going to see you see see it, and we're going to uh, circle the numbers, and we're going to underline the question, and we're going to do this in the systematic way that we talked about before. First step in the systematic process was to ask ourselves, what are we trying to solve for, and give it a name. Well, that's the underlined part of CUCC, and I underlined how many red-haired dolls does she have, and let's call that R for red-haired dolls. So, we're done with the first part. We're trying to solve for R, the number of red hair dolls. Let's do the second part. What do we know? Well, the question gave us a couple of bits of information. It said she had a total of 40 dolls. And then it also said that she had eight more brown haired dolls than red haired dolls. So I can set up a couple of questions or a couple of expressions with that information. I know that she's got a to total of 40 dolls and they're either brown-haired or red-haired. So the number of brown-haired dolls plus the number of red-haired dolls equals 40. The question also told us that she has eight more brown-haired dolls than red-haired dolls. So the number of brown-haired dolls equals the number of red-haired dolls plus 8. 
That's helpful. We've got two bits of information, two expressions now that we can use to try to solve this. So let's go to the third step. Let's set up some, set up some equations and try to solve. All right. We know that the number of brown haired dolls equals the number of red haired dolls plus eight. So we've also already isolated B in one of those equations. It was done for us and we know that B equals R plus eight. The second expression was B plus R equals 40. B plus R equals 40. And we know what B equals from up here. B equals R plus 8. So we can substitute R plus 8 for B and rewrite this expression R plus 8 plus R, which is that plus R right there, equals 40. R plus 8 plus R equals 40. Well, now we're done. The, the hard part's setting these up. The solutions aren't that difficult. Let's first combine our R's, and we've got 2R plus 8. 2R plus 8 equals 40. Now, i got to get rid of that plus 8, so I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. Those 8's will cancel each other out and leave just 2R, and 40 minus 8 is 32. Now, it's a two-step solution. i got to get rid of that two times. So if I'm going to get rid of 2 times, I'm going to divide by 2. And if I divide the left side by 2, I've got to divide the right side by 2. My left side, the 2's cancel each other out and leave just R. And on the right side, 32 divided by 2 equals 16. She has 16 red-haired dolls. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. All right, our system is to first figure out what we're trying to solve for. And we see you CC'd, and we underlined how much do downloads at Zap cost. Well, that's what we're trying to solve for, and we'll call it Z. Second step in our solution is what do we know, and to try to put what we know into algebraic uh, format. So we know that you bought three music downloads at Zaps, and you bought two music downloads at Flash and you spent a total of sixteen dollars so three times the cost of Zaps downloads plus two times the cost of Flash downloads equals sixteen dollars your friend bought one at Zaps plus four at Flash and he spent twelve dollars well that's helpful we got two equations now we can probably solve for Z and there's two ways we could do that. We could solve each equation so that they, we, they both were solved for one of the variables and then set those two solutions equal to each other. Or we can solve one of the variables, one, excuse me, one of the expressions for either variable and then substitute that solution into the other expression and solve. So let's do the second process. Let's take this expression and solve it for f. Figure out what it means in terms of f. And that way, if I know what f equals, then I could substitute that solution for that f in the second expression and then solve for z. Well, I'm not going to go through all the steps. It would take too long. But if I take this expression and solve for f, I'm ultimately going to come down to an expression f equals 8 minus 1 and a half z. Now, I know what f equals, so I can substitute for f in the, se in the second expression. I can substitute what we concluded f equaled when we solved the first expression, and, what, and that was 8 minus 1 and a half z. So instead of putting f in there, I'll replace it with 8 minus 1 and a half z. Now I've got an expression that reads z plus 4 times the expression 8 minus 1 and a half z equals 12. Now you can pause and watch my step-by-step -step solution of how I got then get down to what z equals but for the sake of saving some time let's just cut to the chase and z equals four dollars. The cost of downloading at Zaps is four dollars. Tough lesson. I'm, I'm sure you had some problems with it, and you may want to go back and look at part one and part two of these lessons on solving systems of equations again. When you get done, 
go to mastermath.info and download the worksheets and try those and then try the interactive quiz as well. See you again real soon.